Tonight on America's Dumbest Criminals. Ever wonder why that birthday card from your grandma never arrived? This man seems intoxicated by the power of brandishing a Molotov cocktail, but that's gonna change. And this canine officer has a story to tell, and we think it'd be a mistake to ignore him. So don't move a muscle, and everything will be just fine for everyone, except for folks we've dubbed America's Dumbest Criminals. For America's Dumbest Criminals, Daniel Butler and Debbie Allen. Okay, okay. Every week we come out here and you try to put me on the spot. Moi? Oh, French. <laughs> well, this week, though, I'm going to take charge and direct the conversation. Oh, no, no. You've been watching Oprah again, haven't you? You made that connection, didn't you? <laughs> no, but our first story involves some pranksters, and I'm just betting that you have pulled more than your fair share of pranks in your life. Moi? Tell us some of the things that you've done. Well, let's see, I TP'd the neighbor's yard, I blew up something with an M80, and, well, you know, I don't want to talk about it. You know, just some stuff. Have you pulled any pranks? No. Well, I think I'm typically on the receiving end of pranks because I really feel for the victims. Yeah, I know. They, 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 sometimes they don't turn out to be as funny as you thought they would be, you know? No, I know that's nah. true. But I hope the guys in our first story would agree that they went out for a night of firing paintball guns at unsuspecting people on the streets of Los Angeles, and that is not funny. Nuh uh. But as you're about to see, their prank backfired on them in a big way, and that is funny. They were most definitely caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's just a night on the town for two real wusses whose idea of a big time is to hit unsuspecting pedestrians with paintball pellets. <laughs> Note how much fun they seem to be having as again and again they fire on defenseless people from the safety of their moving vehicle. Good night. <laughs> oh yeah, these are real tough guys, but now let's leave this homemade video of what they call fun, but which the police refer to as evidence to gain a different perspective. Having fun now, boys? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you managed to lose a shoe during a break-in? Well, our next crook knows. Yeah, we doubt that this cinder fella rode in a carriage made from a pumpkin, and we can't say if he had an evil stepmother, but he certainly provided a distinctive clue police used to discover his identity. Now, this is no fairy tale, but it is something to remember me by. <laughs> There was one particular incident that happened here in Annapolis about six months ago. One of our neighborhood watch block captains, who was very attentive, found a gentleman breaking into his next door neighbor's house. When he did that, he properly called the police department for assistance. When they got to the house, they trapped the suspect inside of the house. And as they were surrounding the house, he continued to run through rooms and through the basement and the second floor trying to find some sort of escape. Finally, he decided he was just going to take a shot for it, and he took off out the back door. Of course, the officers were there also, and they started running after him. The suspect continued running through the neighborhood, jumping over fences and everything else, with officers trying to find him. The only problem was, the only thing they got of him was the shoe that he left behind. Based on the fact that he left his one slipper behind, I dubbed the gentleman Cinderfella. I covered the story about Cinderfella, the, the shoeless burglar. It's a pretty interesting story to cover, especially when the public information officer from the police department dubbed him Cinderfella. Officers and detectives were able to identify the individual by that evening, and we were able to get an arrest warrant for him. Based on the arrest warrant, we got in touch with his parole and probation officer. 
She, in turn, knew that she had an appointment for seeing him the next day. And when he showed up for his appointment, we nabbed him. Did the shoe fit? Yes, it did. <laughs> Put those shoes okay. back on, fellas. <laughs> you know, one of the messages we try to convey on this show is that crime will get you nowhere fast. You might start out with life in the fast lane, but you'll end up in a mess, as these next thieves find out. Now, to show you just how unglamorous life on the run can be, I'll do the play-by-play -play on this chase for you right here. Well, it's another day of Catch Me If You Can as the two ill-advised car thieves take on the entire L.A. police force. As you can see, they're driving along sweating bullets, wishing they had a cloaking device because it's just kind of hard to hide a bright red Cadillac. Notice the pattern that's going to develop as the challengers begin to lose their cool. Here we see a right turn and a squeeze play. That's illegal use of fenders. That's going to cost them. Let's move along the action a little. Here's that right turn we've been talking about. And now they're going for a new strategy, running on foot. Ouch, what's that bar? Now they're going into the open, but that's not really working all that well for them. Looking for a hole, looking for a hole to crawl into. There's that right turn again, way too predictable. And another right, just one play in their playbook, go figure. I think they sense that someone's onto them. They come out of the trees looking for an opening, but all they see is this hulking helicopter overhead. They're doubling back, doubling back. It didn't work before. Why should it work now? I don't know. Oh, hello, officer. It's all over. They're down. They're down. No score. End of game, guys. And no rematch. In Florida, it is illegal to sing in a public place while wearing a swimsuit. Okay, going postal. It's a phrase that's used so much that it's worked its way into common vernacular. Maybe it's depressing to be around all those dead letters. I don't know. At any rate, we've got a story about a couple of postal workers who were making special deliveries to their own pockets. Take a look. If your birthday card from Aunt Jane isn't delivered on time, it's not necessarily slow mail service. Just as the postal inspector thought, this guy just couldn't resist those brightly colored greeting cards that often contain cash, like the ones that were planted for this sting. You're under arrest for theft of mail. For what? For theft of mail. All right? You got any proof? There's proof, all right. Cards stuffed in this drinking cup and marked bills in his pocket. This mailman has a lot to sort out. Now, this postal worker, appearing out of uniform, was not fooling around with greeting cards. He was after the big stuff. While at work sorting mail, he intercepted two boxes containing a computer and a television. Then he placed these swell-looking labels with his address over the real labels. The man in uniform is really a postal inspector who made the arrest on the spot. Okay, Saron, you're under arrest for theft of mail for those two parcels that were just delivered here. In our travels across the country, we have talked to a lot of people about the goofs that crooks make, but we've never recorded an interview quite like the one you're about to see. To see an unleashed commentary about this, we go to a real news hound. A call came out of um, a window being open or possibly a burglary. Apparently, the suspect had called it in to us originally. I was only a couple blocks away. When I talked to him, he said he'd just been walking by, and the uh, window just busted open when he was walking by. He thought it was the wind that blew it open, and so he called the police. I got his name and his information, and he went on his way. And uh, I tried to get a hold of an owner, and we couldn't find one. And so we called a board-up company to come up and just board up the window. And I parked just about 15, 20 feet away. And, uh, here comes the guy walking back up. He stops in front of the window, looks around both ways, looks inside, and apparently he didn't see me. I was just sitting a few feet away, but he climbs in the window, and he was wrapping up a radio and stacking it by the window, and he went in the refrigerator and was taking out food and eating food and stuff. So when I uh, called to him, told him to, you know, come on out, he ducked down and tried to hide, like, like he wasn't there, like we didn't already see him. And so I had Bullet with me, my police dog. Bullet really tells his story better than I do.
Just a few moments after the bullet was barking real loud, the, the guy came out and was not interested in tangling with the dog at all. If a man is holding a Molotov cocktail, it sure is an happy hour. And now with news that spells job security for everybody in law enforcement, here's Daniel with ABC Headlines. In a vain attempt to escape from police, a 19-year-old suspect smashed a window and entered a building that was headquarters for a dog training school. <laughs> Obviously, the... K-9 had spotted him, was at the top of his class. It cornered the suspect and kept him at bay until police arrived, all without laying a tooth on the guy. Good job, Lassie. <laughs> a petty thief in Sunnyvale, California, had perfected his crime. He would use a credit card to jimmy open the back door of a residence, slip inside, quickly grab a few valuables, and be on his way. But he got in too much of a hurry one day and left his credit card at the scene of the break-in. <laughs> Apparently, you shouldn't leave anyone's home without it, you know? <laughs> the two guys seemed baffled that they would get stopped by California Highway Patrolmen. I mean, after all, they were only doing 50 miles an hour. Ah, but it wasn't a matter of speed. It was a matter of style. Because, you see, they were having trouble with the gas pedal. One was behind the wheel, while the other one was under the hood working the carburetor control. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking it got a little overheated. And that closes the file on ABC headlines. News ripped from somewhere near the back of your local newspaper. Debbie? It takes a guy with bubbles for brains to concoct a Molotov cocktail. And when you see the cavalier way he treats this little bomb, you can see that he's headed for much more than a hangover. We had a gentleman that attempted to set his apartment on fire. Couldn't do that, tried three times wound up going outside with a device that resembled a Molotov cocktail. I was driving to work, witnessed a young man with a lighter standing in front of an apartment complex. While he was lighting this device and attempting to throw it out of a building, a civilian drove by, told him to stop what he was doing. This shook the guy so much, he wound up spilling some of the flammable liquid on himself. Lobbed it out onto the lawn. The lawn took off on fire. He was on fire. He put himself out, and he came running at my truck foot pursuit started where he ran away and the civilian attempted to run him down with his pickup truck. Dumped her in low and the pursuit started. As I responded into that area, I got to an intersection and noticed several people running around. Jumping curbs, fishtailing. Police officers arrived on scene with the civilian chasing him. There's times I had his head right up by the window. I was trying to reach and grab his hair. He was so afraid of what the civilian might do, he ran over jumped into the police car. So I chased him hard, <laughs> scared him big time. I couldn't understand much of what he was saying, but I did hear him say that his legs were burning and that possibly he'd be on fire. I thought that was the easiest thing I'd ever done. And the police officer, smelling the gasoline and unaware of what was going on, just asked him to leave right off the bat. I told him to get out of my car and go wait on a corner. I still had to go look for my suspect. Little mix up on communication. He drove around the corner and was flagged down by some witnesses. You had him. You had him. I said, Who'd I have? I said, That's the guy. He was throwing fire bombs at the building. At that time, I realized I had just put my suspect out on the corner. Another brief chase went on, and they eventually captured him in a parking lot. But this time, he decided he didn't quite want us to save him by jumping into my car again. This time, he wanted to fight. I'm going to burn you guys. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. The fight was on. We got him into custody without too much incident. And that was about the end of it. We got him. Well worth it. Well, the mother-daughter relationship can get ugly, but when a daughter sticks up for her mom, it's a beautiful thing. As this officer finds out the hard way, let's saddle up and head on out to Sandy, Utah. It was one uh, sunny summer day. Uh, a few years ago, I was out running radar in a, in a neighborhood uh, looking for speeders. Uh, this lady came by and was traveling a little bit over the speed limit. So I proceeded to pull her over. She stopped in her driveway. And as she pulled in, she opened her garage door. As I got out of my car and started to approach, I noticed that her daughter got out and ran into the garage. Well, I think you're going a little bit fast down there. Not thinking a whole bunch about it. I came out, the woman got out of the car, and we started talking. All of a sudden, the, the little girl, dressed in a cowboy outfit, comes running out of the garage with a rope and starts tying me up. 
and she's screaming, don't worry, mommy, they're not gonna take you to jail, I'll save you. So in about 30 seconds, I'm standing there with my ticket book in my hand. My legs are tied together. I can't move. Mom's laughing. I'm laughing. It was, it was actually pretty cute. Oh, my gosh, I'm half. It was just very unique to have a situation like that occur where you pull somebody over. It seems like just a typical day, a typical traffic stop. And here's this little cowgirl dressed up, runs in and gets a rope and ties up the, the bad policeman that's going to try to take the mom away. It's probably one of the best traffic stops I've ever made. Uh, I ended up letting her go. I never wrote her a ticket. And uh, it, was, it was fun. Good experience. says a righteous man falls seven times but he gets up how many goof ups does a criminal nitwit make before he doesn't rise again <laughs> in this case plenty oh yeah this thief picked a poor target for a break-in took the hard way in and found it even harder getting out if you didn't hear this from a police officer you might not believe us and that's why we filed it in the department we call we're not making this up <laughs> We got a disturbance call in a residential area about 3 o'clock in the morning. There was uh, neighbors that were being awakened by some guy that was screaming for help. They didn't know where it was coming from, but all they knew was that somebody was yelling for help and they wouldn't stop. I came into the area, rolled my windows down, and I could clearly hear a guy yelling, help, help me. started walking around the neighborhood and slowly I was able to determine it was coming from in between two houses. So finally, I started yelling myself, where are you at? And the guy says, I'm in here. I'm looking around, and I don't see where he could possibly be. So I, I say, you're in where? And he says, I'm in the chimney. So I climbed on top of the roof of the house. I walked over to the chimney, and I looked down into the chimney. And there, I saw him. He was about 15 feet down in the chimney. He was curled up a little ball. He was covered in black soot. And I looked at him and I said, what are you doing in there? He just said, I was trying to get into the house and I'm stuck, so you need to get me out of here. Well, when I got there, I saw his car, but I couldn't find Phil anywhere. I said, Phil, where are you at? And I look up and I see him on top of the roof of the house. And uh, I said, what's going on, man? And he said, well, I got this guy stuck down in this chimney. I tried and tried to get this guy out, but I couldn't. So I finally had to call the fire department. And uh, the fire department came out. They tried a couple different things to get him out of the chimney, and they were unable to. Nothing was working. So they uh, called the heavy rescue people who came out, and they figured the only way they could get this guy out of the chimney was to go ahead and use sledgehammers and jackhammers. I'm talking a really big jackhammer. The homeowner showed up and asked me what was going on, and I told him somebody was trying to break into his house. He said, he, why would anybody want to break into the house? It's vacant. There's nothing in there for him to steal. And in addition to that, he said all of the windows in the back of the house had broken locks. After five and a half hours of the fire department trying to get this guy out of the chimney, uh, they were finally able to get a large enough hole that this guy could climb out of. And then we were actually able to see the guy that was in the chimney. He was a black male about in his late 20s. The firefighters brought a hose over and began to spray him off. And after about 20 minutes of him cleaning himself off with the hose, we realized that he wasn't a black guy, that he was actually a white guy. It's a white guy. So this guy spent five and a half hours stuck in a chimney. I mean, he was way down in there. Trying to break into a house that was vacant. And there was absolutely nothing to steal. If you ask me, the guy was really dumb. Dumb. A lot like the house. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Oh, yeah. Poor guy. Great story, though. Well, we're out of time for tonight, but we're glad you rode shotgun with us tonight. <laughs> Join us again next week because there's more done to come as we chronicle the misadventures of war crimes. If you've got a lead on a story or you just can't wait until next week for more state-of-the-art stupidity, visit our website at www.dumbcrimes.com. You do that so well. Thank you. Before we go, we want to thank everybody who helped us with tonight's show. The officers did a fine job for us tonight, but they do a great job by keeping us safe each day. We appreciate them and others like them. Absolutely. And you and I would be nowhere without them, quite frankly. <laughs> you got that right. As always, we hope that we've all learned from others' mistakes. But if you haven't, we just might see you next week on America's Dumbest Criminals. Goodbye. <laughs>